Thanks, my grand kids, for that wonderful, wonderful number. Praise the Lord for that. Our topic today, peace in your life. Peace in your life. The prophet Michael, by inspiration, give us a beautiful prophecy of hope. Speaking of one who would be born in Bethlehem, where we know Jesus was born. The prophet says, he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the world, or the end of the earth. Mike chapter 5 verse 2 and verse 4. So the marginal reading of the American Revised Version say, this man shall be our peace, and this man is Jesus Christ. Remember that, my friends. Folks, someday worldwide, globe, everlasting peace will be realized through him in a new earth, which he has promised to all believers. Blessed are the meek, he said, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, verse 5. As the prophet David declared, shall delight himself in abundance of bees. Psalm 37, verse 11. Someday, new heaven and a new earth declare will be a place wherein dwell righteousness. So we are to look for, to expect, to believe in, and to plan for this new earth, my friends, wherein dwell righteousness. And with this, we read it. And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceful habitation, in sure dwelling and in quiet resting place. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Remember this. Only when Christ sits on the world throne, that men of the world or people around the world will know world peace. Glory to God. In all things, he must have a preeminence, for it is pleased that the Father that in him should all fullness of dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto him, and by him I say, whether they be thin in earth or thin in heaven. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. So Christ will be peace at last to a worry world, my friend. And he will, when he reign, remember that, my friend. I don't know about you. We need not wait for that day to have peace of heart. In the 14th chapter of John's Gospel is a fourfold cure for worry or a fourfold recipe for peace on inner heart in this life, my friend. 
He believed in God, believed also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Folks, the first rule that Jesus keeps for peace of mind is to believe in God. Anyone who has real faith in God will stop worrying, my friend. Think about that. Jesus called him himself. Jesus called him Father. And God is our Father too, my friend. When we were little children, we never worry about what we eat and what we wear, whether we will be sick or live or die. We left all worry to father and mother. They will look after everything. They knew everything, and they love us, my friend. Remember that. If our God is our father or our heavenly father, why should we ever worry? Why should we not have peace in hearts? Why should have peace in our heart? Why should we, like many today, worry about losing our jobs, worry about the stomach problem or cancer? Why be distressed about death and war? Jesus said that faith in God is a cure for worry. Glory to God. Remember that. So let not your heart be troubled. In other words, distress, worry, lacking peace, except he become a little children, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, verse 3. Let us have a faith in God as a child has faith in his Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So in God, we trust. We, we can quit worry. We can have peace of heart. Jesus loves us. He cares for us. He said that. The very hairs of our head are numbered. Matthew 10, verse 30. That God knows all about us, my friend. God knows about you and me. He understands our fault. As we read in Psalm 139, verse 2, He knows all about us and loves us just the same. We can believe in Him. We can trust Him, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. So now we come to the second part of Jesus' recipe for soul peace. He believed in God, believed also in me. We shall not worry, my friend, if we believe in Christ. He is the Savior of the world. We must believe that He died on the cross for our sin. If we worry about our sin after we confess, after we have confessed them, we do not believe that God has forgiven them. No one needs to carry a terrible burden of sin. Violate conscience that will not let him rest day or night. In First John chapter 2 verse 2, we read that Jesus died for the sin of the whole world. And in John chapter, First John chapter 1 verse 9, it is written, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all our sin. We need never worry more about them, my friend. No matter how we feel, our salvation is not based on feeling, but facts, the very promise of God in Christ. Glory to God. Remember that. As you know, Christ foresee the future, and we shall not worry, my friend, about either. In the 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus gave an outline of the future, a prophecy of the day to come. 
our Savior not only take care of the past, but He take care of the future too. And He promised that those who love Him will be with Him where He is. We need never to be separate from Him, neither now in spirit, now then in actual present. John 17 verse 24. And in Matthew 28 verse 20, He say, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And that's why we should. That's why. Should we worry? Then why should we worry? Let us believe in Jesus as our Savior, my friend. Now we come to the third part of the Jesus recipe for peace in mind. In the it is found in John 14, verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. That is, my friend. We are not to worry because there is a home waiting for us. There is a, a heaven beyond, my friend. We are not going to be left out in a cold with no place to go. This life is not the end of the story, my friend. Remember that. Let me repeat that. This life is not the end of the story. The cemetery is not the last resting place. The last word is not said at the funeral. Then a thing, so the thing that are so cruel, so unjust, so hard to understand in this world, we be straightened out on that day, my friend. There is a land beyond, a life beyond, a reunion beyond, where the children of God will meet and greet nevermore to abide. And this verse, John 14, verse 2, plainly said that there is a place for God's people. Yes, heaven is itself is a place. It is real, and God will be there, my friend. Remember that. Even though your heart may be broken today because you have lately lost a dear one, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God's land of tomorrow, beyond the, the crying, beyond the tears, beyond the night, beyond the headache, you have a confidence that God's tomorrow will be better than today, my friend. Think about that. Scriptures say plainly that in that glorious days, we shall be like Jesus. Believe, now are we the Son of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that. When he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First John chapter 3, verse 2. Let not your heart be troubled. The half has never yet been told, my friend. Remember that. Folks, no matter what heaven is like, it is beyond our imagination. It cannot be judged by this life. We shall never be able to tell the half, nor a hundred, nor a thousand part of what heaven really is, my friend. Remember that. Some times ago, I stood in a railway station, and I saw the reunion of a shoulder death returned from the overseas duty with his wife and little son. They were evidently had been separated for several years. The little boy acted as though he had never seen his father before. And the mother would just stand and look at her husband and began to cry. Then he would throw her arm around him and laugh. The little boy looked up at both of them in wonder. He knew something wonderful was going on, but he could not understand it. 
So I must admit that as I watched it, them tear ran down on my cheeks. I thought at that glory day of reunion, when the people of God will meet and greet one another. And best of all, when they shall see Christ, when they shall see the print of the nail in his hands and the scars on his forehead and the wound in his sight, what a wonderful hour that would be, my friends. The eyes had not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So right now we come to the fourth and the last part of Jesus' cure for worry. It is in John 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. Jesus is coming again, my friend. He was here once, and he will coming back. The world has not seen the last of him. Looking out upon the condition in our world, war, famine, sickness, confusion, weakness, and sorrow. Many are filled with worry and anxiety. Hard are failing for fear. Jesus speaks of this very time as we read in Luke 21, verse 25 and 26. There will be distress of nation. A man heart failing them for fear, but let not your heart be troubled. Why not? Because he is coming back. He is coming again. Then we, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Luke 21 verse 27, my friend. Folks, the second coming of Christ is the one great, not far off events, which will bring final and eternal peace to the world, my friend. So we have these four great reasons. So why Christians should never worry? Why Christians should never worry? Why they should always have peace of heart? Are you a Christian? If you are, there are available to you a great of strength and courage. If you are not, do not wait one minute longer. Accept Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior before. Then the burden of the worry and the sorrow will roll away from your heart, and you will be able to go through anything looking up. Folks, the question is, do we have that peace? It is yours. It is our for the seeking, the peace of God, which pass all understanding, which keep our heart and mind through Jesus Christ. That peace is a promise and a foretaste of the peace that will reign over all the earth when the kingdom of God uh, become the kingdom of our world, of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Revelation eleven fifteen. Jesus is our peace now, my friend, individually, and when he comes in glory, his peace will cover the earth as the water covered the sea. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Folks, the king is coming. If his coming does not fit into your plan, then by all means, change your plan. God will help you. Shall we pray? Dear God in heaven, we come before you this hour. Praise you and honor you because you are our creator. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, the beginning and the end. We praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.